Hey, welcome to CG Hacks. I'm Ryan Sims, and today we're going to make some magic happen with our Mystic Smoke Pack. See you in Photoshop. All right, here we are in Photoshop. We've got this really cool image of a wizard here, and we're going to add in some Mystic Smoke into the foreground, the background, and just kind of create a lot more atmosphere, make it a really epic and cool image. So let's first dive into Adobe Bridge and I can kind of show you a little bit with what we're working with as far as the Mystic Smoke Pack goes. We've got our arcs and kind of scroll through that. Got a lot of different options there. I'm not gonna lie, I like this pack a lot. It's really cool. <laughs> We've got some ground patches that we can put, maybe kind of cover up the feet, do a lot of cool things with this. We've got our helix which is like this really cool swirling magic. I really like this a lot. So yeah, <laughs> there's that. Rings, we got rings, turbulent puffs, wisp, vertical wisp, and just some wispies. So as you can see, there's a lot of variety in this pack, a lot of really cool options. And so I don't really have a plan laid out. We're just gonna have some fun and see what kind of cool things we can create. I think, that perhaps there's gonna be some magic smoke kind of coming out of his hand, maybe doing a little swirl. It might have like this golden spiral effect going on or maybe even uh, doing a swirl around his body. So let's just play with the options and see what we can do. This is my wizard layer right here. So I'm just gonna start kind of dragging some into the foreground and into the background and see what we come up with. I really like the helix. I'm gonna start off with that one. So I'm gonna take this one right here I'm going to drag this sucker in and plop it into Photoshop. Very cool. Now I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and maybe resize it. That way it kind of fills up the frame just a little bit. Something like that. We've barely done anything and it already looks so cool. <laughs> Loving it already. I might squeeze it in just a little bit. Kind of like that so you can kind of see a little bit at the top. Maybe even rotate it some. I might contort the angle. But yeah, I'm going to hit enter. And probably what I would do is if I wanted to use this right here, I want this part to be behind him. That way it kind of seems like some of it's swirling into the background and the foreground. So probably the easiest way to do that is I've already got my subject cut out right here on my wizard layer. And with that mask selected, I am just going to hold the alt key down and drag that mask up to the mystic smoke layer. And what it's done is it's made an exact copy of that mask. Now, I don't want an exact copy. I actually want the invert of that. So with that mask selected, I'm just going to hit Control I to invert it. And boom, there you go. So now we have a little bit of the smoke looking like it's going behind him. But we've got this one little foot right here that's sticking out. No problem. Just with that mask selected, we're going to hit my B hotkey for brush and I'm going to make sure that white is selected so I can just kind of click this little arrow right here or you can hit the X hotkey that cycles between these two colors. So I'm going to bring up white and I'm just going to paint over that part of the mask to bring that back into the foreground. And there you go. Easy peasy. We've got a nice swirling piece of smoke going into this shot right here. Now it doesn't have to end there. A couple of things that we can do to try to make this smoke blend into the background a little bit better. I can actually take this smoke and add a color grade to it. So I'm gonna create a new layer by hitting Control Shift N and I'm just gonna call it Color <laughs> because I can't think of a better name right now. I'm just gonna call it Color and clip it to the Mystic Smoke layer and I'm just gonna hit okay. And what I'm gonna do with my eyedropper tool, I'm gonna hit the I hotkey to bring the eyedropper tool out. And let's just say I want this smoke to be the color of this highlight that's hitting him right here on his neck. So I'm going to just kind of sample from that color. Kind of got that nice teal blue there. And I'm gonna bring up my paint bucket tool by hitting the G hotkey. And I'm just gonna fill this layer with that color. And now that we have all of this smoke, that color, I'm going to go over to my blending mode and kind of play around with some of these blending modes. Woo! That's really cool. Color dodge is cool. Let's see what other cool, fun stuff that we do. This is what I like to do. I just like to go through the blending modes and just experiment 
and play around. Like Vivid Light looks pretty cool. It's a little too much for me, but still kind of cool. I kind of like Color Dodge. It's a little bright. Soft Light seems like it blends a little bit better, but I like that brightness. So let's try this first. Let's try Color Dodge. I'm gonna click OK. And maybe we can tone it down. Let's go into this layer and let's double click. And that's gonna bring up our layer style menu. And from there, I kind of want to just play with the blend if settings for a second. So I'm going to take this black slider and just slide it up just a little bit. Maybe right about there. And I'm going to hold the alt key to split this slider and kind of fade that color out just a little bit. Just a nice smooth transition and hit OK. Now this is purely me just playing around right here at the moment. So I like that, but I feel like it's still a little too strong. So I might just kind of back down the opacity halfway just for a second. Might crank it back up maybe to like 70, 75%, something like that. And I really liked soft light from before. So I'm going to hit control J again. I need to make sure that it's clipped to the smoke layer. Otherwise it's going to affect everything. So let's go ahead and right click and resolve that by going to create clipping mask. I am going to undo this blend if setting. So I'm going to click right on this uh, layer right click clear layer style click on that and now i'm going to go back into the blending mode soft light and now you can see i've got a little bit of that blending going on a little bit more of that soft light effect but then i've also got this nice highlighted effect along with it which i think is pretty cool so let's say that we have some bright blue teal blue magic power coming out of his hand right here and that is the light source that's causing all of this teal blue color so let's go ahead and let's put something right here another form of smoke just to kind of add that effect in i'm going to put this behind my wizard layer i'm going to go back into adobe bridge and let's select something that we think would be a good magical effect let's use this one right here let's drag it in i'm going to put it into photoshop I'm going to resize it to where it looks like it's kind of fitting in his hand. Just kind of resize it up just a little bit. And let's go ahead and maybe take some of these color effects that I have right here. And I'm going to select them both. I'm going to hold the control key down and click on both of those. And I'm actually going to hold the alt key and drag both of them down to this mystic smoke layer. Now when I do that, it's gonna affect everything because they're not currently clipped to that layer. So all I'm gonna do is make sure they're both selected, right click, create clipping mask, and boom, there you go. So now we have our bright teal blue color effect. One thing that I'm seeing real quick that I wanna change is that the highlights all around this smoke, I feel like they should only be kind of in the area that this main light source is gonna be in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that color dodge layer that I had connected to my first Mystic Smoke layer. And I'm gonna actually just throw on a black mask. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key down and click on this little icon right here. And that's gonna throw on a black mask. And with a white brush, I'm just gonna paint in that effect in the surrounding areas to make it seem like there's actually uh, a bright teal blue highlight only affecting those areas. So I'm gonna pull out my white brush and I'm just gonna kind of lightly paint in this area, maybe the surrounding area, like so. That way it just seems a little bit more believable. Maybe even add a little bit right here, but not a whole lot, because I don't want it to affect the entire image, just kind of some of the areas that we think that those highlights should show up. Maybe even fade it as it goes further down, it fades out a little bit more, something like that. And that way our effect it's just a little bit more subtle. Now, as you're doing this, it's important to note that you always want to light your subject when you're photographing your subject to kind of match the background that you're gonna be creating. However, sometimes you have little areas like this that might need a little extra work where you might have to paint in the light. So let me just zoom in really close. So on my wizard layer, I'm just gonna click on that, create a new layer by hitting Control Shift N. And we'll just call these highlights or HL for short. I like to shorthand things when I can. It makes my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna check that box right there and hit OK. I'll probably change the blending mode here in a moment. And I'm hitting the left and right bracket keys just to kind of like resize my brush. 
And so I'm going to take that color. I like to use my eyedropper tool again, hit the I hotkey to bring that up. Just kind of sample from those surrounding colors. B to bring up brush. And then I'll just like to kind of paint in on the outer edges here just to give it that little extra glow, kind of like so. Really getting the tip of the fingers here, things like that. And this does involve a little bit of finesse. So if you've got time to kill, by all means, go crazy. And then let's say I've got that really, really good. Once I've got it kind of where I want it, I will probably change the blending mode to something like Color Dodge. There we go. You can see like a little before and after. And you can always bring that effect down into the clothes if you want. Maybe it's hitting the shoulder a little bit more. Just kind of intensifying it. Not really going crazy with it, but just kind of enhancing what's really already there. Before, after. Something like that. And let's just say we want to add some stuff right here in the front, maybe covering up his feet a little bit more. I kind of like it personally, but just kind of finding a reason to add some more stuff in here because I'm really liking these effects. So let's go over to ground patches. Let's figure out which one we want to use. Let's just go with this one right here. And let's drag it, put it into Photoshop. I'm going to slide this down just a little bit. And I'm actually going to bring it below this Mystic Smoke layer right here. That way it's a little bit more in front of his feet but behind this layer. And I'm probably going to resize it just a little bit to make it seem like it's more on the ground in front of him. Something like that. And then hit enter. Now if you want you can leave the blending mode on normal or you can change it to screen. Uh, I personally kind of like it on normal. I just like the thickness of that smoke. But you can always play around with the blending modes. Once again, I'm going to take some of this color that I've seen before and this uh, soft light color layer. I'm going to hold the Alt key down, drag it down, right click, and then create the clipping mask. That way, I've got a quick color grade for this smoke and made it blue. And we can keep that color or if I want to use the eyedropper tool, sample from like a darker blue, say maybe the blue in his coat here, I could do that. And hit the G hotkey to bring up our paintbrush tool, click back in, maybe make this smoke just a little bit darker and I can keep it like that or I can fade the color out make it more of a grayish dark blue something like that and just keeping that in mind that if we want to do that we absolutely can now if you like this really thick dark smoke you can keep it like that but let's just say for example you want more of like a I don't know like a ghost like smoke more see-through you can take these smoke layers that we've already put in there say this mystic smoke along with the other one and I'm just going to click at the bottom hold the shift key down click all the way up to the top and include my color grading and everything and hit control G just to group that all together we'll just call that mystic smoke and let's just change the blending mode it's on pass through right now we could change that blending mode to screen and there you go now you have a little bit more of a see through ish ghost-like type of smoke just you know again playing around with the blending modes you get a lot of variety a lot of cool fun effects that you can try to create when you're messing around with the uh with the blending modes personally i'm going to leave it right there at pass through just because i like that effect the best now let's say instead of this spiral helix that we have right here let's turn that off for just a moment let's say i want to add something that maybe just kind of whips around like a little spiral here Let's go up to our arcs in Adobe Bridge and let's grab this image right here and I'm going to drag it in and I'm actually going to put it behind our wizard, say right there, and I'm going to hit control T to bring up the transform box, kind of size it down just a little bit, maybe do some rotations and kind of get it right about where I want it. We'll just say right about there and I'll hit enter. And actually, I'm going to drag it down even more. I'm going to drag it down below that mystic smoke layer that's already in his hand. Now, if I want to, again, quickly just color grade this according to the way I did this way, then I'll just grab both of these color copies right here, hold the Alt key down, drag them down, and then right click, create clipping mask just to clip those to this layer as well. Let's just say I'm not entirely happy with this motion right here I want to kind of stretch it out just a little bit 
One easy way to do that would be to go up to Edit and Puppet Warp. And I can actually set an anchor point here, here, and here. And then just kind of drag it out just a little bit. Maybe kind of drag this part over a little bit more. This part out slightly. And just kind of take it in the direction that I want to go. I can set more anchor points, manipulate them as well, and really just kind of stretch this part out in the direction I want it to go and then hit enter. That's one way, one quick way that you can do that. Let me hit control Z to undo. Another way you can do it is just to go back up to edit, transform and warp. And again, with this giant box with all the little tiny boxes inside of it, just kind of grab the areas in which you want to kind of drag it and do the same thing here. It does tend to stretch it, maybe just a little bit more, but that's where we can always add more smoke to continue it on the bottom part here. And then let's go back up. Let's add, say, one more. Let's go with this one right here. I'm going to drag that in. And again, just kind of continuing this smoke effect that we're kind of going for. Might enlarge this just a little bit. And then I'm going to hit Enter. And same as before, I'm going to highlight these two color layers. Hold the Alt key down, drag it up, right click, create the clipping mask so that this new Mystic Smoke layer now has that color applied to it. And I'm actually going to take all three of these, select them, hit Control G, put them in a group. I'll just rename it Mystic Smoke. And I'm actually going to drag it above the floor layer there just so we can see it a little bit better. And let me go back into this grouping. I'm going to select my Mystic Smoke layer here. Go up to Edit, Transform, Warp, and just kind of manipulate this layer and stretch it out just a little bit to kind of get a little bit more of a, a filling effect. Just kind of go ahead and fill up the frame with this and maybe get this part at the top and bring it out of frame. Something like that. That way we've got like a little bit of a motion going with it. And hit enter and maybe this part that's sticking out over here since I'm not too keen on that I'll just throw on a mask by clicking this button right here and with a black brush just kind of painting that effect out now let's say that you don't really like the way that I colored this smoke here and that seems a little bit too much a little bit too complicated no worries let's just go ahead and select these two color copies let's delete those and just go up to hue saturation make a layer right there clip that to your mystic smoke layer and from there all you need to do click on colorize and you can actually start adjusting the color from here you can make it a little bit more saturated adjust the brightness darkness things like that and that might be a little bit more simple of a way to color grade your smoke and if you want to play with the levels again just go up to the levels adjustment clip that to your layer as well and from there you can increase the highlights play with the shadows mid-tones and play with those settings in order to change the brightness and darkness of your mystic smoke that's the one thing I love about Photoshop is that there's a thousand ways to do pretty much the exact same thing there's no one right way to do one thing if you want to color grade with hue and saturation or if you want to do it with levels or a curves adjustment layer or just create a new layer and color on that layer whatever gets you the result that you need then you do you so the possibilities are endless with the mystic smoke pack lots of different options that you can try you can use it for magic you can use it as just creating more atmosphere so if you're interested in this stock pack you can visit cg hacks Check out the link in the description below. And until next time, create more, say less, stay creative.